Welcome to this week's episode of Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science for Wednesday, August 28, 2013. Our top story comes from the world of biotechnology. In a surprisingly convenient follow-up to last week's episode, University of Michigan researchers have developed a new method to create biofuels from cellulose. Now, unlike a lot of development in biofuels, this was actually not aimed at producing ethanol. Although it's a potentially good fuel, it has some issues, especially in using it with current infrastructure and technology. Mainly that it cannot generate the same amount of heat energy as gasoline when burned, and can easily mix with water which could corrode pipes. So these researchers created a bioreactor that produced isobutanol. It's more chemically similar to gasoline, so it could potentially replace it instead of just being an additive like ethanol is currently. Although unusual in this project was the use of two microorganisms instead of just one. A species of fungus was used to break down cellulose in corn stalks and leaves into sugar. Then a modified E. coli bacteria turned some of that sugar into isobutanol. Using this combination, they were actually able to achieve record-breaking yields of biofuel from waste plant matter. Getting both organisms to coexist was key to the success of their production method. While the fungus was breaking down more than enough sugars for itself and the bacteria, the bacteria was not generally contributing to the ecosystem. However, the researchers were able to strike a balance by adjusting how fast the bacteria was allowed to grow. They will continue to develop this system and hope it could eventually lead to a biofuel replacement for gasoline, using only waste material from agriculture and forestry. And next is an update from the world of chemistry. Fertilizer is a great, because without it we could feed even less of the world's population than we do now. But there is an issue. Excess nutrients from this fertilizer can run off and contaminate natural water systems. Things like excess phosphorus in lakes or the ocean can create massive blooms of algae. And this sudden growth can deplete oxygen in the water and damage the environment but a team from the University of Southern Denmark may have found a simple and somewhat ironic solution. When buildings are torn down, it produces a lot of waste, but leftover concrete may be the key to reducing phosphorus. You see, concrete contains cement, which itself contains calcium with some aluminum and iron, all of which can bind to phosphorus. They actually found that filters created from waste concrete could absorb 90% of phosphorus when placed in a stream. It was only a six-month study, but they are confident that this could be scaled up to protect marine environments. The most efficient was concrete dust due to the maximization of surface area, and believe that such filters might even last several years, but more study is needed. We end with news from the world of biology. Here at Brainstorm, we prefer to cover positive stories to basically highlight how awesome science can be, which is why we normally don't cover predictions of global warming or ecological disasters because it's a real bummer. However, a year-long experiment at San Francisco State University suggests that we may not be as screwed as previously thought. Their experiment involved a particular type of algae that is abundant in the oceans. They are vitally important because they create calcium carbonate shells around themselves, absorbing some of the CO2 in the ocean. Unfortunately, many scientists thought that increased temperature and ocean acidification from climate change would harm these microorganisms. Certainly, other studies of their growth in warmer and more acidic conditions confirm that fear. But this year-long study was the longest to date, and at least in the strain of algae studied, they were pretty good. In fact, they actually had an easier time of forming their calcium-based shells in the long run, while growing in water meant to simulate conditions predicted in a hundred years from now. This gives scientists hope that such important ocean organisms may have the ability to adapt to the changing conditions. Another big surprise came when the scientists analyzed the genetics of the algae. There was actually not much change in the genes being expressed between growing in current ocean conditions and predicted future conditions. These findings will hopefully lead to more long-term studies of organisms' ability to adapt to future conditions. Well, hope you enjoyed this episode. In reference to our first and second story, what waste material would you find a creative use for? Let us know your thoughts on that and all the stories in the comments.